Hi everyone, I'm Jane, and today we're gonna paint this super simple morning forest. This is a really easy painting that even a first-time painter can do. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and then check out the video description below for a full list of materials. And let's get started. I'm starting with a new canvas. I haven't gessoed it or prepared it in any way except that I wet down the back with water. Then I'm just using my one inch flat brush and wetting it in the jar. I'm gonna start by loading up my brush with white. And then I'm just gonna grab a little corner of primary yellow. Now the reason that I wet down the back of the canvas is because a little bit of that will absorb through the front of the canvas and it will help keep my paint open a little bit longer. So if you live in a dry area, try that and see if that helps you out. Now I'm just picking up some yellow. I still have white on my brush. Starting just outside that color that I laid down and then lightly blending up into it. Remember to just use the tip of your brush when you're blending. You lay your brush flat, put more pressure on it to apply paint, but you just use the end and use light pressure to blend colors together. That time I picked up the tiniest pinpoint of green with my yellow. And as you can see, you can see that green in there. That's how strong the phthalo green is. So be really careful. If you pick up a lot of green or even just like twice as much as I did, you're gonna get a green color much quicker than you might want. And the yellow won't cover it up. So just a pinpoint. Now I'm still picking up yellow and I'm gonna pick up about twice as much green as I did before. So two pinpoints and notice how much green it applied. So if you start with your green and you don't pick up enough, you can always get more, but if you pick up too much of that green to begin with, you're gonna end up with way too much green. Just the same thing there, just a little bit of green with my yellow. So what this is gonna do is kinda help insinuate that we have some distant trees. I'm not focusing on blending these colors together real well. I like being able to see my brush stroke lines and letting the colors be a little bit separate here and there. And just add a little more green to this side. Now I'm gonna pick up some yellow and more green. Notice I got a little bit of a glob on each side and I'm gonna get almost straight green down here. So again, starting below that section, not worrying about blending it until it's all applied and then light pressure to just kind of streak them together. All right, now I'm gonna go to my half inch angle brush, wet it in my jar, wipe a little on the edge, and I'm gonna load up with white. I'm not getting blobs of white, I'm just putting some white into the bristles, mixing it in with the yellow. Now I'm gonna grab the tiniest, tiniest speck of green. I'm just looking for a color similar to the light colors in the background, but I do want it to stand apart just a little bit. Now with the tip of my angle brush pointing down, I'm just dragging up. I'm starting about one third up from the bottom of the canvas and then just dragging that color straight up to indicate some distant trees. Now I know you can't see that real well right now, but this is how we're gonna build the forest all the way to the front. So you'll be able to see that better in a minute once our colors start getting a little darker. Kind of space your trees out at interesting intervals. Don't make them all, you know, one or two inches apart. And I'm not putting a lot of pressure on my brush right now, just enough to get the tree trunk sizes that I want. As I drag the angle brush up, it is picking up a little bit of the white, the yellow, and the green because that background is still wet. And that's exactly why I wet down the back of the canvas. Now, as you drag these tree trunks up, it's probably gonna kind of blend in or fade out at the very top, and that's perfectly okay. You wanna give the indication that the sky is very bright, and that bright light 
may be kind of overtaking the trees so you can't see where the top of them are. So let those tree trunks just kind of melt into the background. Now I'm just kind of dabbing in all different directions, sometimes with the flat of my brush, sometimes with the tip of my brush, just kind of insinuating some foliage on our trees here. I'm using pretty much the same color combination that I used for the trunks. In some areas, you'll be able to see it better than in others. But these trees are so distant that really you don't have to worry about being able to see it. In fact, if you can see it quite well in one area, for example, if it looks really green against the yellow, pick up a little bit more yellow and white until you can just barely see it. And you don't have to be real precise with this. I'm kind of starting on one of the trunks and just pulling out little areas that kind of look like some leaves. And again, once we get into the trees that are a little bit darker, you'll be able to see that so much better. Especially right here where it's quite light in the background. I have very, very little green on my brush, almost none, because I really want those trees to melt into that bright sky. That area was a little too green, so I just picked up a little more yellow and white to kind of tap it down a bit. All right, now I'm only mixing up yellow and white because down here there's already some green on the ground and it's still wet. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit of that. So I'm taking a color very similar to what we did on the trees and just kind of indicating some ground foliage here. I'm using a very, very similar brush stroke to what I did at the top of the trees. In fact, I would say it's pretty much exactly the same. So let's break right here and I'll show you exactly the brush strokes that I'm doing in the trees. This is the same brush stroke that I did the yellow foliage with, just a darker color. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how I'm doing that section. Likewise here in the ground, this is the type of brush stroke I'm doing. You can see it a little bit better with this darker color. Here on the ground I am pressing into the tip of the angle brush a little bit more to make it look like there's maybe some broad leaves on the ground. All right, so let's finish the foliage on our yellow ground. Resist the temptation to make this very visible. You just barely want it to be different than the background, not dramatically different. If you go too dark too fast, you're gonna have a very dark painting. All right, now I'm gonna add a little bit more green. And again, start with less green than you think you want. You can always add more but you don't want these next trees to be too dark. We're looking for them to be just a little bit darker than the ones we just did. So it's gonna take me just a second here to get the mixture I like. I'm gonna start with a tree trunk right here, a little bit lower than the first ones. And that one's not quite dark enough, so I'm gonna add in a bit more green. And I'm just gonna go over the same trunk each time I make a darker mixture until I have the color that I like. I'm putting a little bit more pressure on my angle brush here so that these trees not only are a little bit darker but they're a little bit wider and that's going to help give the impression they're closer. I'm just going to wet down the back of my canvas again real quick because I was starting to get a little bit of drag. Just a spray bottle with some water in it. Get a little extra water on your brush when you feel like you need it. And I'm gonna keep adding these darker trees. I'm starting from about one fourth up the canvas. So the first set of trees, I started about a third of the way up the canvas. These are about a fourth. And notice not all of my trees are straight. Some of them kind of bend one way or bend the other. And when you're adding your tree trunks, 
don't pay attention to the trees that are behind necessarily. Add each layer of tree trunks wherever you feel like they need to be. If they happen to cover up a tree behind it, that's okay. You know, if you're standing in the forest looking out, there's gonna be trees that overlap, trees that kind of cover part of one tree or completely obscure another tree. And let's add the foliage on these trees as well. Now with the foliage on the trees up here, I am doing a little bit darker on that far right side. And as I move in toward the middle, I'm picking up just a little more of the yellow and white. I don't want it to be quite as dark green right there in the middle because that's where our sun is. So it's still darker than the background, just not as dark as the ones on the far right. So I wanted to do a super simple painting today because I feel like I've been pushing you guys pretty hard for the last couple of weeks. And I know that we all have those times when we feel like nothing we paint turns out right. And every once in a while we need to step back and paint something a little more on the simple side. Because when you have that success after painting even something very simple, that can not only help boost your confidence, but it can maybe give you some ideas for other things to paint. And we'll add our leaves on the ground. Same way, we'll just bring it down a little bit farther so that the top of that previous layer still shows. And now hopefully you can start to see a little bit of distance in our forest. So that background that we did almost looks like there's even more growth in the distance that you can just see the colors of, not necessarily even the shape. The first set of lighter trees seems a little bit more distant and smaller. And that last set that we did seems a little bit closer and more defined. I even threw in just a little bit more green onto the ground there. I think the ground wouldn't have quite as much light on it as the top of the trees. I'm just gonna wet down the back of my canvas again because I was getting some drag and I'm not quite ready for it to be dry just yet. Now I'm going quite a bit heavier on the green. I didn't pick up any white this time, just yellow and green. And I'm putting more pressure on my brush to get even wider trees here. Drag it up and notice it starts to fade out a little bit. And again, that's still okay. I want it to be just a little more defined at the top than the rest of the trees, but even then it still kind of fades into the background and that's what I like. Now, as we get darker, you're going to be able to see more and more of your brush strokes in your trees, but I think that that's okay. I kind of like it because it helps insinuate a little more texture to the bark of the trees. So I didn't really worry about seeing the brush stroke lines or little areas of my trees that were darker or lighter. I'm just focusing on the shape and how dark the paint is that I'm using. And here, notice my trees are starting only about an inch and a half or so from the bottom of the canvas. Again, space them out interestingly. Don't make them all real regular. Some of them are closer to each other. Some of them are farther apart. And heavier pressure as you go down to the bottom of the tree to really widen it out. Also, each time my trees get bigger, I do fewer and fewer of them. So notice I'm only doing a few trees here. In the background, I did quite a few. I'm just gonna give each tree just a couple of small branches. I'm not gonna get real crazy with branches here, but these trees are a little bit closer to us so we can see a little more detail in them. So I will give them just a few branches. Control the pressure on your angle brush so you can get nice thin branches. I'm really just using the point on the angle brush. I'm not using the full length of it. and we'll add our foliage at the top. Again, this foliage is quite a bit darker than the other ones, but as I move toward that lighter color where we had some white, I am picking up more yellow so that it's just not quite as dark green. It's still quite darker than everything else, but I want it to be just a little bit brighter right about there. 
and make sure that your foliage isn't just stuck to the branches. Notice I put it in some areas where you can't see any branches. There isn't a branch there. And I let parts of the foliage of one tree overlap the branches in the trunk of another tree. Quite a bit darker in this corner. I decided I want to make just a couple of really short trees in the foreground. There might be some in the distant trees, but they'd be so small and so washed out by the light that you wouldn't really see them. So I didn't worry about putting any in the distance. But I'm really using a similar technique to how I made the branches on these trees. Just making a couple little ones and then dashing on a little bit of foliage here and there. When I'm doing the foliage on these little trees, I'm really only using the point of the angle brush just kind of crushing the point on lightly to get some small leaves. And that does take a little bit of practice. You know, some people have a hard time with brush control and the tendency is to just put the full pressure of the brush onto the canvas. But practice just using the very tip of the brush. If your branches are getting too wide, you're just putting too much pressure on it. Let's lighten that part up. I don't want those leaves to be that dark. Wipe off some of that that's getting gunked up on there. And I just picked up a little bit of yellow. All right, we're gonna do our foliage. I didn't clean off my brush, but all I'm picking up is the phthalo green. So the ground here is gonna be quite dark, and it's much closer to us, so it should be. I'm picking up quite a bit of paint, so I'm even getting just a little bit of texture in those leaves and bushes. And now see with that ground there, we've got quite a bit of distance with three different layers of trees. I'm just going to dry that with my hair dryer super, super fast because I want it dry for the next part. I'm going to pick up a blob of yellow because I want to try and keep as much green out of it as possible. Load up my brush with it and add some white. I'm not working with a ton of paint here. I'm trying to keep the paint pretty thin on my brush. I'm wiping off quite a bit of it and I'm gonna use my brush flat and with light pressure, just streak down. You can add more white as you go. I would suggest starting with less white than you think you need because you can add more if you need to. So these are like some little sun rays. So I'm not starting on top of my darker trees that I just did. I'm starting in the yellow of the background, but I am streaking it down over top of everything there kind of try and keep it in a little bit of a fan shape. So the light rays, picture them coming from one point and they wouldn't cross over each other if they were coming out of that one point. They would kind of radiate out like a fan. So I'm making it look like they're coming from behind that tree on the far left. I'm still just using very light pressure here. If you put a lot of pressure, you're gonna get a big streak a big hard line. You can use the edge of your brush for a sharper point. And pick up a little bit more white to get a little bit brighter of a highlight. A 
right over top of that tree. Just some little sun rays that are kind of poking through the leaves on the trees. If you get a line that's too hard, just flip your brush so that it's flat and not on the chisel point and very, very light pressure, just go over that line again. So I wiped some of my paint off flat and then lightly streaking over that line that I think was a little too hard. Really brighten that up in there. I'll clean that up in a minute. And laid down quite a bit of white paint there and then with light pressure just streaking it out. Let's add a little bit on this side going the other direction. So I took a clean, damp brush and just wiped over that part where it got on top of my tree. All right, now my angle brush is clean. I'm loading up with phthalo green and burnt umber. And those two colors together give me a really beautiful dark green. I'm just going to start sketching out where I want my big main tree to be. A little extra water because my background is dry now so I'm not picking up any of those colors and I have to keep a little extra water on my brush so that my paint doesn't break up quite so much. And then I'll use the brush flat to just fill that all in. Now the phthalo green and the burnt umber are both fairly transparent colors. So you will see some of your background through here, but don't worry about that. Just make sure that the paint is covering the area that you don't have little polka dots from the texture of the canvas. If you can still see some of the colors through it, don't worry about it because we're going to add some highlights to this tree and that will help cover it. Let's do a little branch off to the side here. I'm kind of letting my brush wiggle a bit. So this branch has a little bit of personality. And we'll take this branch all the way up off of the top of the canvas. Just put a little extra pressure on it to widen the branch out. And maybe he's got a big gnarly root that's poking up out of the ground. We'll just add that in right here. All right, now I'm going to grab just a tiny speck of white. I just want a color slightly lighter than what I did the tree with. And I'm using the edge of the brush, the chisel edge, and just kind of drawing some little swoops into the tree to indicate some bark. This is just a very simple way to do the bark. I'm not trying to fill in everything. Notice how I have those little lines. That's kind of what I'm going for all over the tree. See, I'm covering most of that first color that I did, but not all of it, and it is still wet. And if you get something that's too light, like I did right there, I think that's too light right now then you can just pick up a little of your darker color and just swipe right over it once. Don't work it over and over and over. If you get way too much color that you just can't swipe over once and get rid of, let it dry and come back to it. Let's do the same thing up here in the branches. I'm just not putting as much pressure on my brush, just indicating some highlights. A lot of this on the branches may not show because of the foliage, but you want an idea that it's there anyway. 
See these little marks that I'm making are only about an inch, inch and a half long. Let's go just a little bit lighter. I still have the green and the brown on my brush. I'm just picking up a little more white. Up here I think would be quite bright. And just a little of the green and brown to kind of bridge the gap between the light that I just added and the dark that's already there. You want to use really light pressure here when you're adding the highlights and any shadows back in. If you put heavy pressure on, you're going to apply way too much paint and you're going to lose your highlights and shadows. You're just going to end up painting the tree a solid color. I keep going just a little bit lighter each time so that when I go back over the areas, the little swoops that I made for the tree bark, some of them get lighter and lighter so that our tree has a little bit of personality. Looks like he's got some twisty bark and branches. Let's get you close up here so you can see. See, I'm using very little pressure. I'm really just touching the brush to the canvas. So if you've highlighted rocks in a painting with me before, this is a very similar technique. The main difference is the shape of the brush strokes. When we do rocks, we do very angular brush strokes. This one is a little bit more curved and softer shaped. It's that super light pressure that helps not only apply the bright color, but also pick up a little bit of the darker color that's already there and streak them together so that they blend, but are still a little separate. We've got a little knot in the tree there, which I think is pretty cool. Just pop a few highlights with some brighter white and we're about done with it. Okay, I'm going back to my green brown mixture with a clean angle brush and we're gonna add foliage to this tree. I'm gonna put just a little bit more pressure on my brush so that some of this foliage is bigger. Other than that, it's the exact same brush stroke and technique as with the other trees. Now this tree, I feel like, is kind of between us and the light rays. So as it goes up to the top, it might be a little bit darker there. Maybe the sun hasn't quite hit it directly just yet. So I'm just gonna leave all of this foliage quite dark, even as we move toward the brighter part in the sky. Take that all the way to the very top of the canvas. If you wanted to go back through the foliage after you're done adding it, and add a little bit of white to your green-brown mixture, kind of like we did with the bark, you could certainly do that here. I thought about doing that, but ultimately I really liked the super dark foliage against that bright background, so I decided to just leave it. Now don't fill this in completely and just get a big dark blob that hides everything behind it. Still let some of those lighter colors poke out here and there. I think that'll be a little more interesting than just having a big dark blob at the top of the canvas. Stand back every once in a while, maybe five, six feet, and make sure that the top of the tree is balanced. If you need to add more foliage, go ahead and do that, but stand back before you decide. Same green-brown mixture here, and we're gonna add some close-up foliage. Some of it I'll make it look like it's coming from behind the root of the tree, and some of it I'll make overlap the root of the tree. And a little in this far corner. And then we'll go ahead and sign it, and we are done. And there's your forest morning painting. Now in the video description below, I also left a few different color combinations that you could try if you don't like the green and yellow, or if you want a different feel. So make sure you check that out. Also in the video description are links to where you can find me all over the internet, including my website, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Want to keep painting with me today? Check out these two videos that I've picked just for you. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you as always for painting with me, everyone. And I'll see you next time.